Delta Lloyd exporteert zijn deelnemingenstrategie naar eerder Nederland en Europa is er sinds een half jaar een Azië deelnemingenfonds. Kenmerk van dit fonds is dat er een belang van minimaal 5% in Aziatische small caps worden genomen en dat ondernemingen worden geselecteerd op stabiliteit en dividendbeleid. Over Aziatische small caps en investeren erin praat ik met Jillian Wu. Is it not difficult to work with a universe existing of Asia, Pacific and Japan? Asia is an area of developed, uh, emerging and even frontier markets. Actually, for us, it doesn't really make a difference of which area specifically you focus on because the screening process is exactly the same. We are looking for basically the uh, uh, companies with a long established track record and minimum 3% dividend yield. And then we do you know, further valuation models and go and visiting the companies, trying to find the companies that are deep undervalued. But uh, by looking at the Asia as a whole, that we ensure ourselves we won't exclude any part of, of, of the region that will provide us you know, this ground to find the right company, the hidden gems. Um, and uh, the fact is that uh, after the screen, and the company that really indeed came out are much more from the mature part of Asia in, in, instead of the more frontier part of Asia. Thinking of uh, China, I do not immediately think about stable dividend paying companies. Are such companies there, are there in China, for example? Actually, there is. Um, among the companies that we have visited, we actually have already visited 250 companies over the past year. Um, now we have 20 names in the portfolio and three of which is actually from China. Uh, the investment process we follow are the exact same no matter which country it actually is. And the uh, area, let's see, the Chinese names that we are investing in now are more the eight share listed in Hong Kong, so not the domestic eight shares, but that consideration is more due to it's harder to move in and out of the eight share market due to capital constraint. But in terms of dividend payment profile, you are able to find uh, the dividend paying stocks from China as well if you do uh, your homework. Do you notice any differences between Europe uh, European small cap companies and Asian small cap companies? Well, the Asian companies are managed by Asian people. <laughs> well, actually, no. Um, for us, we follow the exact same investment, investment process. And uh, so what could happen that you do come across sometimes companies from a different subsector or industry. And I think my colleagues already named one of the examples is like uh, private education is quite a significant industry across Asia. There is an external study done that by 2017, the private education industry will be a hundred billion dollar industry and mainly from Asia. Okay, yeah. And uh, do you face any problems when selecting companies in Asia? And then I'm thinking about environment, uh, lack of corporate governance, maybe child labor. We actually indeed got asked very often about these questions. Um, what I could say is that um, given our investment process, a very intensive research process, and we go to see the company minimum four times a year, and because we're taking five to 10% stake in the company we invest in, so it's quite easy for us to get to the access of not only just the senior management, but also people on the working floor and the production facilities. There is one example that we actually experienced, uh, and that is in China. We visited a shoe manufacturing company we had a conversation with the CEO and the CFO and the marketing person. We were very impressed by the strategy. Uh, and then we actually went to the work floor and um, unfortunately we noticed some very young people working on the work floor. I can't say that they are really under 18 years old or, or not, but looks to us really young. And we checked with the CEO, is child labor an issue or not? His answer is clearly no, not at all, but we were not you know, so, has so satisfied and basically we didn't uh, really do anything about that investment case. So it's a no-go investment case. From an Asian company perspective, what is their biggest concern at the moment? Actually, the global economy, the potential double dip uh, and uh, the currency exchange rate is the two most uh, concern that we hear from the companies um, because some of the companies still export part of their products to the West and a uh, weaker global economy makes the local sort of cost inflation 
worse than what it is. Um, but again, a, a higher salary from the local market is actually good for companies who are selling their products in the local market. Also, we see companies um, taking the chance of a global weakness, uh, weakness in, in sentiment to basically uh, implement cost reduction measures or to actually avoid a, a, a salary rise, even if their revenue is actually uh, increasing. And, and it is different, again, per country. And if you speak to the Japanese companies, they're actually more worried about local competition because uh, over many years, uh, made in Japan actually means uh, high quality with premium price. But it, increasingly, you notice that products from China or made in Korea are also getting a bit better in quality. So in a weaker economic environment, um, the sort of more attractively priced products can win more market share. Well, thank you very much for explaining investing in, uh, in Asia. Thank you. Omdat het Deltaroid Azië deelnemingen fonds nog maar kort bestaat, een half jaar, is er geen analistenrapport beschikbaar op onze website. We zijn uiteraard benieuwd of de deelnemingsstrategie met succes wordt herhaald in Azië.